Good morning, my dear students. Today we will see about infertility. Infertility, the term means failure to conceive within one or more years of regular, unexpected, unprotected coitus. There are two types of infertility, primary infertility and secondary infertility. Primary infertility means patients who have never conceived and secondary infertility means it indicates she has become pregnant before and but failure to conceive subsequently. Infertility implies apparent failure of the couple to conceive while sterility indicates absolute inability to conceive for one or more reasons. So, infertility and sterility are not the same, they are different. If the couple fails to conceive after one year of unprotected and regular intercourse, it is indication to investigate the couple. Factors responsible for fertility are healthy spermatozoa should be deposited high in the vagina. Spermatozoa should undergo changes in acute mortality. The motile spermatozoa should ascend through the cervix into the uterine cavity and the fallopian tubes. There should be ovulation. The fallopian tube should be patent and the oocyte should be picked up by the fibrinated end of the tube. The spermatozoa should fertilize the oocyte at the angle of the tube. The embryo should reach the uterine cavity after 3 to 4 days of fertilization. And the endometrium should prepare for implantation and corpus luteum should function adequately. The cause of infertility is male causes that constitute nearly 30 to 40 percentage. Female causes constitute nearly 40 to 50 percentage. Combined causes constitute nearly 10% and out of 10 patients will come under unexplained category. Causes of male infertility. Disorders of spermatogenesis. It may be hormonal. Hormonal include hypothalamic disorder. Pituitary secretion of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Hyperprolactinemia causing importance. Hypothyroidism, adrenal gland disorder, and diabetes. Second disorder of spermatogenesis include primary testicular disorders that include idiopathic, varicocele, chromosomal defect, Klinefelter syndrome, cryptoarchism, and drugs radiation. Orchitis, chronic illness, immunological illness. Second is duct obstruction, congenital absence of the duct, inflammatory block, surgical trauma. Third, accessory gland disorders include prostatitis, vesiculitis, congenital absence of vas in the case of cystic fibrosis. Fourth one is disorders of sperm and vesicular fluid. Fifth one is sexual dysfunction. And sixth one is psychological and environmental factors. Investigations for the male infertility include age, occupation. Age means not only for the female, the appropriate age to fertilize is 20 to 30. For male also, the quality of the sperm will decrease after 40, 38 to 40 years of age. Occupation, if they are exposed to high temperature. Habits like smoking, alcohol and drugs. History of TB, sexually transmitted disease and diabetes mellitus. Operation for the hernia or the scrotum. Second include general examination. Third one is local examination. It includes examination of penis and scrotum and surgical scar. Epidermis palpated for enlargement and thickness. The vas feel thickened in case of inflamed conditions. The special investigations for male fertility include semen analysis. Hormonal assays, testicular biopsy, immunological test, patency of the vas, chromosomal studies, semen analysis of the sperm count, the fresh sample that, that means it should be reached with lab within 30 minutes, most initially ejaculate. The male should be abstinent for 48 to 72 hours. The sperm concentration should be more than 20 million per ml. 
total count should be done more than 60 million it's around 60 to 120 million jacket volume should be more than 1.5 ml total mortal count is more than 30 million viable sperm should be more than 50 percentage normal shape or morphology should be for there for more than 60 percentage Bustles absent, similar fluids, pH is 8 and contain fractals. The sperm terms, normosomia, that means normal ejaculate. Astospermia means no mortal sperm. Teratospermia means less than 30% of means more than 30% of spermatosa with normal morphology. Asospermia means no spermatization in the ejaculate. Aspermia means no ejaculate, that means no semen. Necrosomia means dead sperms. Postcoital dust or seams or harness dust. The woman, that means it is actually it is a male infertility, but the woman is tested for this dust. The woman presents herself at the clinic within two hours of sexual intercourse. The mucus aspirated from the cervical canal and spread over the glass slide. And the smear made from the posterior fornic surface are controlled. Normally, there should be 10 to 50 mortal sperms are seen. If less than 10 sperms, proper semen analysis should be undertaken. The, the sperm shows progressive but not rotatory movement. The presence of antispermal antibodies in the cervical mucus shows rotatory movement. The sperm penetration test that is in vitro it is expensive nor reliable. Then semen cervical mucus contact study. Second one is testicular biopsy. It is indicated in case of asospermia to distinguish between testicular failure and obstruction the vast difference. It also reveals whether the seminiferous tubules are mean normal but unstimulated by antipituitary glands or whether they are incapable of function due to primary canal failure. Third is hormonal assays. Hormonal assays include follicular stimulating hormone, a high emphasis denote primary canal failure, a normal level in asospermins suggests obstructive lesions, low FSH indicate pituitary or hypothalamic failure, and need FSH or LH or GNRH treatment. Prolactin more than 30 nanogram per ml indicate hyperplactinemia required treatment. Low testosterone level indicate low luteinizing hormone or leading cell dysfunction. No response to GNRH the pituitary failure. Fourth one is chromosomal studies that means karyotyping should be undertaken in case of asospermic men as 15 to 20 percentage of them have chromosomal defect. The common disorder is Klinefelter syndrome with 47XXY karyotype. Fifth one is immunological disorder, detection of various sperm antibodies both in seminal plasma and cervical mucus. This test required in abnormal postcoital test, abnormal semen profile and in case of unexplained infertility. Management of male infertility include education of sexual counseling, coital position and masturbation. Then substance, if they have substance abuse, they have to stop it. Reduce the heat around the scrotum. Correct the endocrinopathies. Surgical include correction of varicocele, correction of undescended testes in childhood, vasovasotomy, reversal of vasectomy operation. Antibiotics, if there is any infections, Hormones like testosterone, hydrate hormones and GnRH have all tried to improve spermatogenesis with variable results. Hormone therapy, HCG, 10,000 international unit IM weekly for 10 weeks to improve testosterone in secretion. Testosterone, 25 to 50 mg daily orally improves testicular function. Clomiphene. 25 mg daily for 25 days followed by rest for 5 days is given cyclically for 3 to 6 cycles indicating hypogonadal infertility. GnRH indicating hypothalamic failure. Tamoxifen 10 mg daily for 6 months. Dexamethasone 0.5 mg daily or 50 mg of pregnisolone daily for 10 days each cycle for 3 to 6 months recommended in the presence of sperm antibodies. Then 
slide now fill that means otherwise known as viagra 25 to 30 100 milligram one hour before intercourse improves the rectal function but recent report on cardiac ischemic heart disease is alarming then at last artificial reproductive techniques indicated in oligospermia impotency premature ejaculation hypospadiasis antispermal antibodies in the cervical mucus unexplained infertility second is female infertility the etiology includes severe endometriosis pelvic inflammatory disease ovulation disorders elevated prolactin polycystic ovarian syndrome early menopause benign uterine fibroid pelvic adhesions congenital defects in genital tract dyspareunia and vaginal causes cervical factors tubal factors these are the causes of female infertility the age factor maternal age and fertility as the age increases the woman's fertility naturally starts to decline in her late 20s after the age of 35 a woman's fertility decreases rapidly a woman is born with all the eggs she have with the time the supply diminishes the remaining eggs also age along with the rest of the body after the age of 32 a woman's fertility potential gradually declines infertility in older women may be due to higher rate of chromosomal abnormality that occur in the x as the age older women are also more likely to have health problems that may interfere with fertility the risk of miscarriage also increases in the woman's age the gradual decline in fertility is possible in men older than 35 the reason is straightforward a woman is born with all the eggs she have and with the time supply diminishes the, dimin the remaining eggs also age along with the rest of the body physical obstructions like in case of endometriosis pelvic inflammatory disease uterine fibroids pelvic adhesions ovarian failure investigation for female infertility include the history examination height and weight blood pressure rheumatism palpation of thyroid and lymph nodes palpation of the breast and presence of secretions just hormonal dysfunction the special investigations include test for tubal patency that is the first one hysterosalpingography that is the visualization of the uterine cavity and the fallopian tube it is done in the x-ray department using Foley's catheter it is performed between the end of menstrual cycle and ovulation that means at the term the day of the cycle after thorough cleaning of the lower genital tract with a full aseptic technique radiopaque dye injected to the cannula into the uterine cavity under direct vision with fluoroscope screen 15 ml is enough if the tube is patent medium will seem to spill out of the abdominal ostia and smear the adjacent bowel apart from tubal anatomy this examination excludes congenital abnormalities of the uterus just by cornus uterus Accurate inseptate uterus and fibroid. Second is hysteroscopy. It is a direct visualization inside the uterus. Hysteroscopy is introduced inside the uterus using a sheath and the uterine cavity distended with carbon dioxide. Third one is sonar salpingography. It is safe and practical method of evaluating tubal patency under USG guidance. Slow, deliberate injection of 20 ml of physiological saline into the uterine cavity by Foley's catheter. Management tubal infertility include tubal microsurgery, in vitro fertilization, and embryo transfer with success rate of 20 to 30 percentage. Tubal cannulation. It restores patency of 75 percentage and pregnancy rate is 40 percentage. Gamete intrafallopian transfer or gift useful in cases of immunological infertility provided the tubes are patent. Tests for ovulation include basal body temperature, endometrial biopsy that is curating small pieces of endometrium from the uterus one to two days before the onset of menstruation. Fern test. A specimen of cervical mucosa obtained by platinum loop spread on a clean glass slide allowed to dry then viewed under microscope and characteristic fern is formed. Ferning disappears after the ovulation. Ultrasound hormonal study. 
the hormonal studies in the female infertility include plasma progesterone. It raises after the ovulation and reaches peak of 15 nanogram per ml at the mid luteal phase and declines corpus luteum degenerates. A low, su suggest, low level suggests corpus luteal phase defect and needs hormonal therapy. Second one is luteal hormone. Luteinizing hormone surge from anterior pituitary gland occurs about 24 hours prior to ovulation. The luteinizing hormone surge helps to predict ovulation time and thus improve the chance of conception. Hyperprolactinemia. More than 25 nanogram per ml require X-ray of pituitary fossa or CT scan and fundus examination to exclude neoplasm. FSH raised FSH seen in ovarian failure, low FSH in pituitary dysfunction and anovulation. Thyroid test, especially in hyperprolactinemia. Management of anovulation include clomiphene citrate. Dose of 50 mg per day starting from the second day of to sixth of the cycle. Ovulation is monitored by series of USG. If the response to 50 mg is not satisfactory, dose increase to 100 mg per day. Since it needs constant monitoring, treatment can initiate in the special infertility clinics only. The risk of multiple ovulation and multiple pregnancy are increased. Second is com combination of comifin citrate plus human menopausal melatrophin. In PCOD, 50 mg of comifin citrate from 2 to 6 the day of the cycle. Injection, human menopausal melatrophin, 75 units IM added to the day of 3, 5, 7 and more if required. Third one is pregnisolone and hyperplatinemia is treated with the bromocryptin 1.25 at the bedtime daily for 7 days. In ovarian failure, ovarian failure can be consequence of medical treatments or complete failure of the ovaries to develop or contain eggs in the first place, that is Turner syndrome. Ovarian failure can also occur as a result of treatments as chemotherapy and pelvic radiotherapy for cancer in other body areas. These therapies destroy the eggs in the ovary. Next is polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a normal ovary and it's a polycystic ovary. Produce too much of androgen hormones, that the male hormone, causes an irregular or no menstrual cycle. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a health problem that can be affect humans' menstrual cycle, fertility, hormones, insulin production, heart, blood vessels, and appearance. The women with PCOS have this characteristic. They have high level of male hormones, also called as androgens, an irregular or non-menstrual cycle, and may or may not have many small cysts in their ovaries, cysts are fluid-filled sacs. PCOS is the most common hormonal the reproductive problem in the women of childbearing age. An estimated 5 to 10 percentage of them have PCOS. The woman with PCOS, the ovary does not make all the hormones needed for any X to become fully mature. They may start to grow and accumulate fluid, but now no one egg becomes large enough. Instead, some may remain as the cyst since no egg matures or release, ovulation does not occur and the hormone progesterone is not made. Without progesterone, a woman's menstrual cycle irregular or absent. Also, the cysts produce male hormones which continue to prevent the ovulation. Other causes like medications, thyroid problems, cancer and treatment, other medical conditions like delayed puberty or amenorrhea, secretion disease, HIV or AIDS, kidney disease and diabetes. Medications include temporary infertility may occur with the use of certain medication. In most cases, fertility restored when the medication stop. Thyroid problems like Disorders of thyroid gland, either too much of thyroid growth hormone that is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism can interrupt the menstrual cycle and cause infertility. Certain cancers, particularly female reproductive cancers, often severely impair female fertility. Both radiation and chemotherapy may affect a woman's ability to reproduce. Chemotherapy may impair reproductive function and fertility in male and woman. Other medical conditions like Delayed puberty, amenorrhea, the squishing skin disease, sickle cell disease, HIV, AIDS, kidney disease can affect the woman's fertility. 
Caffeine intake, excessive caffeine consumption reduces the fertility in the female. Early menopause, absence of menstruation, early depletion of ovarian follicles before the age of 35. Although the cause is unknown, certain conditions are associated with early menopause including immune system disease, radiation of chemotherapy treatment and smoking. Immune infertility. The developing embryo may be miscarried due to the mother's immune system recognized as it a foreign body and attacking it. Also, the woman may produce anti-sperm antibodies to her partner's sperm. ASA neutralizes the sperm by clumping them together and destroys their membranes. They also caught over the receptors involved in the sperm egg binding and fertilization. An estimated 12 to 15 percentage of unexplained infertility in the woman is linked with the anti-sperm antibodies. A woman with anti-sperm antibodies, the, the antibodies gather the sperm together and poke holes in their membrane, rendering them useless for consumption. It makes it impossible for the sperm to penetrate correctly into the egg. Membrane proteins. The septin and oocyte membrane protein is responsible for binding the sperm with the egg. If this protein is not receptive or present, fertilization cannot occur. Treatment. The, infer the female infertility treatment in infertility can be treated with the medicine, surgery, artificial insemination, assisted reproductive technology. Stimulate the ovulation with fertility drugs. About two-thirds of couples who are treated with infertility are able to have a baby. In most cases, infertility is treated with drugs or surgery. Assisted reproductive technology. In vitro fertilization or IVF, it is most effective. Recommended when the woman, both the fallopian tubes are blocked. ART work best when the woman has a healthy uterus, responds well to the fertility drugs, ovulates naturally or uses the donor eggs. Most common choice of treatment include in vitro fertilization, artificial insemination, frozen embryos, gamete intrafallopian transfer, zygote intrafallopian transfer. Assisted reproductive technology includes in vitro fertilization, gamete fallopian, sift, tubal embryo transfer and frozen embryo transfer. This technology techniques also apply to oocyte donation and gestational carriers. These are relatively new procedure for a couple who are unable to conceive by other methods. Although ART has helped many people to overcome the infertility, there it is not the answer for the answer for every infertile couple. Most of the time we use ART only when less complex and less expensive method for treatment have failed. However, in certain circumstances such as advanced age or severe male factor, we may recommend ART as the first line therapy. IVF gift Sift and TETCH are very similar procedures although they have few significant differences. During an in, in vitro fertilization of embryo transfer, sift and TETCH, the oocyte and the sperm are combined in a culture dish in the laboratory. The fertilization very early embryo development occur outside the body rather than in the fallopian tube. Once early embryo development is recognized, the embryos are transferred either to the uterus or to the fallopian tube. Since most programs have seen no significant difference in success rates, they usually perform IVF ET because it is less expensive and does not require laparoscopy and general anesthesia. In addition, IVF ET is the only procedure available for women with damaged fallopian tube. History of ART. In 1978, successful birth using in vitro fertilization. 1984, successful birth using gamete intrafallopian transfer. 1986, the first successful birth zygote intrafallopian transfer. Artificial insemination. The sperm is collected and placed into the woman's vagina, cervical canal or into the uterus. The sperm can come from a partner or from an anonymous donor. Insemination is when sperm is collected and processed. The sperm is then placed into the uterus. 
Insemination may be used if the mucus around the cervix is not compatible with the partner's sperm or woman may have problem with your own immune system. This can use the sperm to be killed before the woman's egg is fertilized. In vitro fertilization involves ovulation induction, oocyte retrieval and fertilization of the oocyte in the laboratory and mix with the sperm in a laboratory. Then once fertilized, the embryos are placed into the woman's uterus. Gamete intrafallopian transfer. It is a mixture of women's eggs and sperm placed into the fallopian tube using the laparoscopy. Once inserted, fertilization is allowed to occur. Gift differs from other procedures that the sperm and oocyte are transferred into the fallopian tube immediately after the oocyte retrieval. Fertilization thus occurs inside the body rather than the laboratory. The gift originally was thought to represent a breakthrough in infertility therapy. National assisted reproductive techniques statistics suggest that success rates higher with the gift than IVFET. However, many investigation investigators have concluded that gift does not increase the likelihood of conception compared to other ART procedures and the statistics may reflect the difference in laboratory exp expertise or in the kind of patients treated with the GIFT versus IVFET. In addition, GIFT does not allow for confirmation of a successful fertilization if the procedure does not produce a pregnancy. Because of these advantages, most programs or institutions do not perform the GIFT. Gamete intrafallopian transfer. Then zygote intrafallopian transfer, but the mixer in vitro, it is a mixture of in vitro fertilization, gamete intrafallopian transfer. The fertilization takes place outside the uterus and placed into the uterine, into the fallopian tubes. How it starting like IVF, women will begin with receiving medication that will help the follicles to mature. Before the body spontaneously release the eggs, the doctor will retrieve them while placed under anesthesia. These eggs will then break taken to the laboratory where they will be combined with the partner's sperm and left overnight to fertilize. About a day later, the eggs which have been fertilized will be transferred back to the woman through the laparoscopy. This type of surge that involves a small incision being made just below the near umbilicus into which tiny tube is in inserted. Through this tube, the fertilized eggs will be deposited in the fallopian tube between 1 and 4 embryos are usually transferred. The embryos will then left to travel on their own down to the fallopian tube and to the uterus. Pregnancy success rate with shift of average 36 percentage of women are able to get pregnant using shift while 29 of women have live birth. However, because of several eggs are transferred back to the woman, 35 percent of pregnant that result from shift are multiplied pregnancy with majority of them being triplets or more. Additionally, there is an increased risk of ectopic pregnancy with this method. Intracytoplasmic sperm ingestion the sperm is injected directly into the eggs in the laboratory. Use if the infertility originate from the male cause this low numbers of sperm, severe teratospermia. ICSI is a form of micro manipulation involves the injection of a single sperm directly into the cytoplasm of a mature using a glass needle or pipette. This process increases the likelihood of fertilization when there are abnormality in the number or quality or function of the sperm. It is generally unsuccessful when used that fertilization failure primarily due to poor egg quality. Indication for XC include very low number of mortal sperm, severe platospermia, problems with the sperm binding to and penetrating the egg, anti-sperm antibodies thought to be cause of the infertility prior or repeated fertilization failure with the standard IVF methods, frozen sperm limited in number and quality. Appropriately 30% of all XC cycles performed in the United States in 1998 result in the live birth, which is comparable rate seen with the traditional IVF. Younger patients may achieve even more favorable results. 
factors such as poor egg quality and advanced maternal egg may result in lower rate of success. XC does not increase the incidence of multiple gestation as compared to standard IVF. Because XC is relatively new technique, first formula performed in 1992, long term data concerning future health and fertility of children are conceived with XC is not available. Some studies report that incidence of congenital malformation called hypospadiasis is increased in babies conceived through XC. This is an area of ongoing investigation because some causes fame male infertility are familial and related to genetic problems. Male offspring might have reproductive problems in us adult. Despite of this concern, it sees the major advance in the treatment of severe infertility. Then who say donation? An IVF unused frozen egg goals are given to other couples or women for transfer with good goal of producing a successful pregnancy. A need for egg donation may arise from number of reasons. Infertile couple may resort of acquiring eggs through egg donation when the female partner cannot have genetic children because she may not have eggs that can generate viable pregnancy. If the donor agree for donation of egg, donors are subjected to tests for infections like HIV, gonorrhea, hepatitis, as well as hereditary disease. Some women may are born without ovaries or other reproductive organs. Sometimes a woman's reproductive organs have been damaged due to disease or other problems, surgical problems or genetic disorders. Once the egg are harvested, it is used for fertilization or can be cryopreserved for future use. Such a system that store and supply healthy ovum to the couple suffering from infertility is known as ovum bank. Selecting an ART program depend upon qualification and experience of the clinic that is personal, support service available in a particular clinic, cost of the program, and success rates that a specific program has. When selecting ART program, the information is crucial. Important points for consideration include qualification, type of patients being treated, support services available, live birth rate per ART, cycle start and multiple pregnancy rate. Older programs have established live birth rate based on the years of experience. Small and new programs may still determine their live birth rate, although the personnel may be equally qualified. Every couple wants to use the most successful ART program, but many factors contribute to the overall success of the program. For example, some clinics may be willing to accept patients with a low chance of success. A clinic may specialize in certain types of infertility treatment. Costs may be varied from programs. A couple may prefer a program based upon interpersonal interactions with the ART team or may feel more confident in the recommended treatment plan. Consequently, it may not always appropriate to compare programs based only on the published pregnancy rates. Frozen embryos Embryos may be taken from an individual stop for later use. Once ready to use, they can be thawed and placed into the uterus. This allows higher chance of pregnancy. Embryo freezing is a well-established form of assisted conception treatment. Increasing number of IVF clinics worldwide are now able to freeze embryos for later transfer. The first frozen embryo may be born in 1984. The embryo cryopreservation allows multiple embryo transfer from a single egg collection improves the chance of live birth. Advantages allow maximizing the potential for conception for IVF and prevent wastage of viable normal spare embryo. Perhaps this is the most important advantage of cryopreservation. Approximately 50% of women may have the spare embryo available for freezing. In some clinics, the pregnancy and live birth rate with frozen thawed embryo transfer is high as those achieved with the fresh embryo transfer. Freezing all embryos for subsequent transfer may be advised for a woman who are high risk for developing severe ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome following and stimulation for in vitro fertilization. Then embryo implantation may be compromised in case of the presence of endometrial polyps, poor endometrial development, breakthrough bleeding near the time of embryo transfer or illness. Difficulty encountered at the fresh embryo transfer example cervical stenosis. 
cryopreservation of embryo is the very important incorporated in the egg donation and program. It is not always possible to synchronize the recipient cycle with that of the egg donor. In some countries, it is mandatory to freeze all the embryo created from the donated eggs, quarantined for a period of six months and until donor have repeat negative screening test. As a result of successful cryopreservation program, frozen embryo have also have available for donation to the infertile couples before cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Thawing the embryo involves removing the embryos from the liquid nitrogen, thaw at a room temperature, remove the cryoprotectant fluid and mix the embryo in a special culture medium. The mixer is then kept in an incubator ready for the transfer. If the embryos were frozen at cleaved stage or blastocyte, they can be thawed and replaced in the same day. However, if they are frozen at the two pronucleate stage, then they are thawed on the day before the cultured overnight to allow them to divide and are replaced when they have become two to four cell. Sperm or egg donation. If the necessary, the sperm or eggs can be received from a donor. Fertility treatment with donor eggs usually done with IVF. Assisted hatching. If the embryologist open a small hole in the outer membrane of the embryo known as the sona pellicida, the opening improves the ability of the embryo to implant in the uterine lining. This improves the chances that the embryo will implant at or attach to the wall of the uterus. This may be used if the IVF has not been effective, if there has been poor embryo growth rate and if the woman is older. In some women and especially with the age, the membrane becomes harder. This can make it difficult for the embryo to implant. Electric or vibratory stimulation to achieve the ejaculation. Ejaculation is achieved with electric or vibratory stimulation. This can help a man who cannot ejaculate normally, for example, because of spinal cord injury. Complications of infertility treatment include infertility, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, ovaries may enlarge and cause pain in the blotting, high risk PCOS, bleeding for infection, or birth weight, birth defects, multiple pregnancies as they are the commonest complication. Surrogacy is an arrangement often supported by a legal agreement whereby a woman agrees to become pregnant and give birth to the child for another person who is will become the parent of the child. People may seek surrogacy arrangement when the pregnancy is medically impossible. The pregnancy risks are too dangerous for an adult mother or when a single man or male couple wish to have a child. Surrogacy is considered one of the many assisted reproductive technology. Adoption is the process whereby a person assumes the parenting of another usually a child from a person's biological or legal parent or parents. Legal adoptions permanently transfer all the rights and responsibility along with the violation from the biological parents or the parents. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know.